So, Professor Kindiki, are you aware that for the last two years we have internally displaced persons in parts of the North Rift, that is Samburu County, parts of Baringo, Elgeyo, Maraquet, and other parts of the North Rift? It's a yes or no? Yes. So, if this committee finds you suitable to hold this office again, what measures will you put in place to see that these families go back to their homes and especially school ch going children will go back to school and people can go back to their homes and live peacefully? Uh, Mr. Speaker, allow me to ask the last question, which is also, are you aware that there are people in the North Rift who were killed in broad daylight in marketplaces, in towns, for example, in Samburu West, in Suguta town, there have been abductions. And this current administration, which you served in during its campaigns and has continuously said that you will not have issues of um, abductions, issues of extrajudicial killings, but I want to put it across to you that it has been happening. There are people in those counties who are missing to date they have been abducted. I want to ask you whether you're aware, and we have sufficiently been informed that it is alleged that it is security officers who have abducted these people. Is that one of your measures of ensuring insecurity is settled in these areas? And do you think as a professor of constitutionalism and, cons and ensuring we follow the constitution, is that the right way in ensuring fair justice even to those who are accused. Professor? Mr. Speaker, the, now that the kinetic operations that we launched in February 2023 has yielded significant fruits, the issue of uh, the North Rift will not be complete until those that were displaced because of the violence meted upon them by bandits, groups, and gangs are returned to their homes. And therefore, it is going to be my priority, if I am approved by this house, to make sure that in line with the rights of every Kenyan under the Constitution, and the relevant instruments, including international instruments on the prevention of internal displacement. We're going to resettle, facilitate the resettlement and reintegration of all communities that were, dispo uh, dis uh, that were displaced by the menace of banditry. Secondly, I've been asked to respond to the allegations about abduction. During my tenure as minister, I made it clearly, um, I made it clear to the police that abductions, extrajudicial killings, and extra constitutional means of apprehending offenders is against government policy, is against the constitution, is against international law. I must hasten to say my observation, because I have been in the front line more than any other place, especially in North Rift, in Northern Kenya, and the Boni Enclave. The officers who served in the special units in counter-terrorism and counter-banditry. The formed up units have been quite professional, generally. But just as I've said in the previous question, in the event there are any infractions, there are any reported infractions and excesses by the special forces that are helping us to fight banditry, again, IPOA and other accountability mechanisms must be put in place to ensure that we do not spoil the very good work that is being done by our officers in the front line 
Some of them have died, others have lost limp. Officers have been destituted. Chairman, I was saying that uh, you know the nominee is a professor, and professors teach in the university, so he can answer questions like somebody who's in class uh, teaching us. Uh, I was requesting through the chair that through the chairman that he can do faster. Chair. <coughs> professor, be concise and precise and to the point. I submit. Thank you. Uh, Nelson, we'll just come around. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, Professor Kindiki, it's unprecedented that twice in two years we've had to apply Section 241 of our Constitution in uh, deploying our officers, our military officers, to back up the police, both uh, to quell the protest and initially sent to the North Rift. What exactly is the state of our police force? There are so many things that are flying around gossip that number one, our officers, police officers could be uh, demoralized. Number two, um, is, is there a situation that you feel the police at some point are very hesitant to execute some of the assignments they are given because of lack of morale and you as a CS, the accusations that you've not helped in boosting uh, the morale of our police officers. What exactly is the state of our police force? Professor? Mr. Speaker, um, yes, we have applied Article 241 twice. And I think there is nothing abnormal with that, Mr. Speaker, because that is why that article exists. So that whenever there is need, uh, the National Police Service may request the support of the Kenya Defense Forces to handle either an emergency or a disastrous situation. On the case of the North Rift, it was important to get the support of the KDF because at that time we didn't, the National Police Air Wing had collapsed. Right now it's operational. Uh, we didn't have air assets. We didn't have uh, adequate long range and manned aerial vehicles, and therefore we needed the support of the military. But uh, the F-14 North Rift is police-led. In fact, the military has, has been supportive in the periphery. It's police-led. Even in terms of numbers, uh, we have 4,500 police officers against less than 1,000 KDF officers. With the regard to the recent uh, emergency we had, Again, um, what we had on 25th of June was unprecedented. And our calling of the KDF was simply to put them on standby should they be needed. And you've seen they have not been needed. But it was a precaution because the criminals who wanted to burn parliament were also threatening to burn state house and other critical installations. So if that was not reason enough to put KDF on standby legally, I don't think any other situation uh, would have uh, met threshold because what we faced in the last month, in our view, was existential threat, not just to the arms of government, but to the state itself. and. Um, and therefore, uh, the police is in good uh, shape. There are issues of welfare which we are handling. I've already mentioned about the salary increments which we have started implementing. There's issues around um, housing. There are also issues about, uh, uh, about um, the, uh, leave and, and so forth and so on. Medication, I've just talked about the hospital that we've uh, established for them fully fledged level four hospital. We have one for the border police again, which again we operationalized under my leadership in Canyonio for the formed up units. So yes, there is more to be done, but it is not true to say that the police force is demoralized. They have done a good job. And when it's necessary, we have called in the KDF in accordance with the law when we feel that the situation is an emergency, I submit. Hossein? I 
I thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Professor and Honorable Chair, the Chairman, I want to rely on uh, section. I'm on this side, uh, Professor. <laughs> I want to rely on section six and section seven of the Act in terms of suitability of the candidate the position he has been nominated. And in this respect, Honorable Speaker, I want to take the minister in terms of suitability on his credibility in terms of respecting what he says in terms of implementing what he says. Because he's been the, this is the second time he's been given a chance. And, uh, and uh, 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 um, Speaker, I want also the nominee to know that absence of war is not necessarily peace. Whatever is happening in the North Rift, Honorable Speaker, there is relative peace. Uh, uh, there's no war, but it might not necessarily mean peace. What am I saying, Honorable Speaker? The candidate, as an example, the candidate came to the North Rift. We had engagement as leaders of the North Rift, and specifically West Pocot County, as an example of the entire country. I don't know what happened, so what the minister did in the other places, but possibly maybe he did what he, he did in West Pocot, which is we agreed on a number of issues, Honorable Speaker, in terms of strategies of bringing peace, including establishment of uh, sub-locations or bringing even the security near to the people so that we avoid the shakawala things and so on. And the minister agreed with the Honorable Speaker with us uh, in West Pocot. And, and, and we also agreed to put uh, security in, s in, in strategic areas. It might happen in other parts of the country. The minister agreed. And Speaker, nothing happened. <coughs> nothing has happened so far. Now, if, the, if Parliament sees it fit and approves the minister again for this position, What's going to happen? What is the minister going to do different, Honorable Speaker, to gain credibility among people, among Kenyans themselves, who might feel that the minister lied to them? And finally, Speaker, take home for the minister. This idea of giving police uh, accounting as an accounting uh, or, or to manage their own money as an accounting officer, I want the minister to take home in terms of the security, the strategic security of this country. What does that mean in terms of security of this country? Going into the future, there are critics, Honorable Speaker, that say, how do you give the police the gun and you also give them the money? What's going to happen? It might pose a serious security in this country going forward, maybe many years in the future. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Professor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> it is true Those that... Those are just two simple questions. Did you honor what you did and said in Pokot? And is the police fund tenable? Very simple. Mr. Speaker, it is true that uh, some of the things that I promised have not been realized, especially the issue of um, operationalization of new administrative units. Uh, but it is also true that some of the things I promised have been realize and I thought the honorable member would be kind enough to notify the house and the country that during the same consultations I had promised that we will provide train and equip 200 national police reserves for West Pocot which we did number two we had promised to set up a security camp at a place formerly called Lami Nyeusi, which is now called Lami, Nye Lami Nyeupe, which we did, and so many other things we did. But the issue of the units is outstanding, uh, and not just for West Pokot, but also for a few other country, uh, counties, including some parts of Baringo, Samburu, and a few other counties that did not benefit from the uh, operationalization of units, and that is work that we are going to complete if we are reappointed. On the second question, the I do not think there is a problem with giving the National Police Service money and control over resources relating to their operations. The operational budget of the police must be run by the National Police Service themselves and not by the ministry, not by the office of the president. And in my view, if there are issues of um, lack of effectiveness, it is not because the police have their own budget. If anything, it should help them even work more efficiently. 
therefore the question should be now that the police have their operational budget what prevents them from serving the people of Kenya in a better manner and those are issues that we'll be looking at uh, if we are reappointed because parliament oversights the use of that money thank you chair <coughs> uh, professor kindiki uh, in the recent past in this demonstration two young men michael kirunga Yagodie, and uh, another young man called kevin maganga was shot dead in nakuru the family has been trying to get some information from my poor. Uh, it is alleged that the independent, uh, the IPO is not receiving required information from the police service. This has posed a great challenge to IPO, executing his oversight mandate. If approved for this appointment, what steps will you take to ensure that the two institutions work seamlessly? Uh, for the benefit of Kenyans. And secondly, how further, how, uh, further, how will you strengthen IPOA so as to execute uh, its mandate? Second, the honorable uh, chair is about urban criminal gang activities. Uh, in in uh, the urban areas, particularly in Nakuru, a, a criminal gang called CONFIRM, which by what the citizens claim has brought about five deaths in every month and hundreds of injuries. Maybe if you're approved and confirmed, how, what are the steps that you'll take to reduce the increase of criminal activities in urban areas and particularly in Nakuru, specifically the confirmed criminal gang? Thank you, Chair. Professor. Mr. Speaker, on the first issue, the relationship between IPOA and the National Police Service is an ongoing uh, conversation. And it is not, a, it's not unusual. It, is, uh, it happens all over the world that the police and the bodies oversight them have no more institutional tensions. We have, during our, our tenure in office, we have encouraged these institutions to work together because each one of them is playing an important role. It is the same problem we had between the police service and the police service commission. And we did a lot of work and, and, and around that and, and were able to get a and win-win situation where the commission and the police service are working together. So we'll apply the same methods if we are reappointed to make sure that IPOA gets the support it requires from the NPS. And uh, going forward, we will support IPOA in terms of more resources, more capacity, but also just brokering the institutional goodwill between themselves and the police. The second question, uh, Mr. Speaker, is on um, the criminal gangs, it is true. We have had uh, a gang in Nakuru known as CONFIRM, uh, and, and, and urban crime is a major, major, major issue. When I took over as a CS for Interior, uh, October 2022, there was a lot of gang violence and gang crime in Nairobi. We were, we've been able to reduce and suppress uh, the Nairobi urban criminal activity significantly. We hope that um, the Nakuru matter uh, could, could also be resolved. And uh, before I was dismissed from office, I had, um, I had a meeting with the leaders of Nakuru County, and uh, we had agreed that uh, according to the feedback the leaders gave us, we needed to change the command because sometimes many of these uh, 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 performance issues are based on uh, the right command. So we are going to work on it to ensure that we eliminate that gang and other urban gangs in Mombasa and a few other towns that are suffering the same problem. Robert Mbui. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, 
Uh, Professor, Kenya's constitution borrows very heavily from the U.S. one, particularly issues to do with the Bill of Rights, and you swore to uphold this constitution and protect it. Recently, you so saw in the U.S. that a gunman tried to shoot a pres presidential nominee and uh, was actually brought down, but despite that, and even missed, but despite that, uh, the head of uh, Secret Service resigned their post. Now, in Kenya, during your tenure as CS, uh, over 100 Kenyans have been killed, murdered by the police. Um, you know that uh, maybe over 1,000 people have been injured. And uh, property worth uh, billions of shillings has been destroyed. Not to forget that a lot of Kenyans have also been abducted. And as we are talking, there are still people, families that are still looking for their loved ones. Now, um, I s we did see that the, the Inspector General of Police resigned. Do you think that uh, as a CS, you should not also have taken responsibility, political responsibility for that failure that the resignation confirms and also either resigned or uh, declined the, 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 the appointment? It's also important to note that uh, during these demos that were held, um, a lot of uh, people were, 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 were shot. And there is clamor and request and, uh, you know, for, for, for justice. In fact, uh, I've attended, one of them was a constituent, Erickson Muticia, and we've gone to those funerals, and the families are asking for justice. You have forensic evidence because you have the bullets, and you know that every bullet that comes from a gun can be traced. Why have we not seen arrests and uh, you know, arraignment in court of the police officers that are accused or that were involved in these shootings? Because that would appease the public a little bit.